Hello everybody and welcome to Comparative Anatomy Laboratory and today we are going to learn about the skull of the cat. If in case you haven't watched the video on the introduction on the skeletal system, I suggest you head there first before you even try to watch this video. There might be some terms that you might not understand, which you will definitely be able to understand if you watch that video first. For the terminology or the names of the bones that we will discuss, we will mostly be using this book. That's Comparative Anatomy by Livy Henrietta Hyman. This is basically the Bible of comparative anatomy from which most of the contemporary atlases and lab manuals are based. I will also provide some supplementary sources and that will be the manuals by Deulis and another one by Cochrane. Back to the skull. As we know, the skull is part of the actual skeletal system. And what does it do? It holds the brain and other important sense organs such as your eyes, your nose, and your ears. Other terms for the skull would of course be neurocranium, cranium, brain case. The skull is not just one bone. You will notice there are actually some lines and these are not cracks. It's not as if your cat has had severe head trauma. These are actually what we call sutures and they're really part of of the skull and that is because the skull is a fusion of just several bones and the reason why there are so many names that are pointed in those atlases and lab manuals these features of the skull these bumps ridges holes depressions all of these have names with the dorsal aspect of the skull you're gonna see most of the bones on the roof of the skull Let's start with the ones here. These would be your nasals. This one would be your frontal. This would be your parietal. There's actually a part that's sort of triangular right here, and it's quite small, and that would be your interparietal. And then finally, when you get to the back, this part is the occipital bone. If we look at the skull from the side, this is the temporal bone, also known as your squamosal bone. The tympanic bullae are also part of the temporal bone. You're also going to see this bone, which is your malar, also known as your jugal, also known as your zygomatic bone. This bone right here, pretty huge, that's the maxilla, and this is your premaxilla. This bone right here is the lacrimal. The sutures might not be too obvious, but in this case, it's a bit obvious. This small bone right there is the ethmoid. After the ethmoid, you have your palatine bone showing from here, which you can also see from underneath. You have this part right here. That is part of your presphenoid, which is also seen on the ventral side as this small part right here. That's part of your presphenoid, but once it gets to this part, in some manuals they call this the orbitosphenoid. So it houses that hole somewhere here at the side all the way to here. That would be your allosphenoid. And then this part is the basisphenoid. So presphenoid for this part with this hole, allosphenoid, the bone that has these other three holes. And then the basisphenoid here. So that would be your sphenoid bone. That would be your pterygoid bone. The, the one inside there, that will be your vomer. Those are the major bones of the skull. That's the end of the lesson. Joke lang! These two big holes right here, that will be your orbit. The orbit is where the eyeballs go. These would be your external nares. I'm gonna give you a dorsal view of the skull. Where my fingers are sitting, not the bone, but where my fingers are. It's basically a space or a depression. So the skull isn't like this whole round thing. It sort of sinks like this. That is the temporal fossa. This whole thing is a zygomatic arc. The zygomatic arc is formed by three bones, part of which is from your temporal, there's from your malar or jugal, and part from the maxilla. These two bumps right here, those would be your post-orbital processes post-orbital because they're posterior to the orbit, above the orbit, so supra-orbital arc, because supra means above, so it is above the orbit, the arch above the orbit. This hole right here, that is the foramen magnum. Next to the foramen magnum are these two bumps right here, those are the occipital condyles. You have these two, those would be your tympanic bullae singular tympanic bulla. In some manuals, 
they're split into two, you can actually see a suture. There is the ectotympanic and the endotympanic. Ecto meaning outer because it's more lateral, endo meaning inner because it's more medial. If we look at the tympanic bulla, the bump right here, that is known as the mastoid process. The bump at the back, that is the jugular process. Your mastoid process and your jugular process. These are the processes of the tympanic bullae. Another feature of the tympanic bullae is this big ass hole right here at the side. Well, that is the external auditory meatus. Let's go to the posterior view again. This ridge is known as the superior nuchal line. In hymen, they also call it the lambdoidal ridge. You're gonna see this bump right here, and that is the external occipital protuberance. Now, let's go to the ventral view of your skull. This entire region right here is the hard palate. So, dun sa ngalangala ninyo, di ba may makakapa kayo na part na matigas, dun sa bandang harapan, more anteriorly, that's your hard palate. And then when you try to press the back, di ba may malambot na part, pero may tissue pa rin dun kind of covers the roof of your mouth. So, that's the soft palate. For the hard palate, it's composed of several bones. So this is called the palatine process of the premaxilla, the bones here, okay? The bone here at the front, because that's still part of the premaxilla. Part of the premaxilla forms your hard palate. The other part is also formed by your maxilla. Actually, a huge portion is formed by the maxilla. That is, therefore, the palatine process of the maxilla. And then you have your actual palatine bone. Part of that can still be seen here. The palatine bone from here can also be seen laterally and it holds some of these holes right here. Then we move on to these parts. I'm not pointing to the bone, but instead the dip. That depression is the mandibular fossa. This is the fossa or the depression that accommodates your lower jaw. Nasal, frontal, parietal, and then there's interparietal, right here, a triangle. If you look laterally, okay, again, lacrimal, and your lacrimal will have what we call the, this hole right here, that is the nasolacrimal duct. The lacrimal bone has that duct. It is different from the hole here at the front. The nasolacrimal duct is different. Now, your premaxilla, aside from having the palatine process of the premaxilla, it also has the one that, that juts out towards the roof of the skull. That's known as the frontal process of the premaxilla. So your maxilla, this whole bone, there is one that's jutting to the roof of the skull that is the frontal process of the maxilla. If we look at it from this view, this part is still the maxilla. Okay, if we look below, because remember that this is this is a maxilla, right? If we just kind of flip it dorsally, that's still the same bone. So that is the orbital process of the maxilla. This part right here, this would be the alveolar process of the maxilla. Finally, the one that is towards the zygomatic arc, this part would be the zygomatic process of the maxilla. But all of this is just maxilla. They just kind of want to break it down into parts, but the whole thing is just maxilla. So relax, relaxilla. Let's move on to the back here. So again, this is the temporal, also known as your squamosal. It also has the tympanic bulla. If you actually have a look inside the tympanic bulla, you'll be able to see like a hard part there. That is the petromastoid bone or the petrosal bone, which is better seen if we cut this damn thing in half. Let's have a look again at the ventral view. Again, this is the palatine, and there's a bone right there. That's the vomer. And right now, my probe is entering, so this hole is known as the internal nares. These holes, like, what are these big ass holes? These are known as your incisive foramina, or anterior palatine foramina. Singular foramen, plural foramina. 
let's have a look at the posterior view. The, the whole thing right here at the back is the occipital bone. Some of the prominent features, apart from the foramen magnum, would be, again, your occipital condyles. And the jugular process of the tympanic bulla is actually part of the occipital bone. Your lambdoidal ridge or your superior nuchal line. In some manuals, although not included in hymen, at least I didn't get to read it, some would label this part as the bassy occipital bone. A bit of the floor of the skull is still made of the occipital bone. Let's look at the sphenoid bones. This part, so that part is the bassus sphenoid. And then this one, the sides, which kind of climb all the way up to a bit here. There, so there is a suture there and it kind of goes all the way. So these three holes, one, two, three, that bone kind of, yeah, if you could see a line there, and then it kind of comes all the way here. That's the allus phenoid. If you look at this bone right here, just right smack in the middle, just this little thing in the middle. That is the presphenoid. But the presphenoid, it kind of comes out. If you see this big ass hole here, so there is a suture right there. That's part of the presphenoid. Just know that this hole, the very first hole of the four, the bone that kind of has that is the presphenoid bone. And it comes out ventrally with just this small, teeny tiny ass part. Lacrimal, so this suture is pretty clear. Yeah, lacrimal, then ethmoid. This is part of the palate. This is part of the orbitus phenoid or presphenoid. And this, this is part of the allus phenoid. These projections right here. So that would be your pterygoid bone. Particularly, this is the hamulus of the pterygoid bone. So the pterygoid bone, they kind of look like wings. And they're sort of extensions of your allus phenoid. But in some manuals, they're kind of like a very separate bone. Let's try to remember a few other things from your skull, particularly what are all these goddamn holes, right? <laughs> so many fucking holes. Holes, 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 holes. The ones where my fingers are, let's remember that again. These would be your orbits. This again is your external nares or your nasal aperture. These ones, these huge ones. This is the infraorbital foramen. Have a look at where my probe is sticking out. The hole above that, that is the lacrimal duct. This is the lacrimal duct. And then the one below that, this one at the front, that is the infraorbital foramen. Incisive foramina or anterior palatine foramina. This hole right here, that is your sphenopalatine foramen. Below that, Okay, there's a teeny tiny hole below that. So again, I am pointing at the sphenopalatine foramen. And then right below that, why am I starting to talk like an Indian? This one right there is the posterior palatine canal. If we look at the skull ventrally, you're actually going to see holes somewhere here that border your palatine bone and your maxilla. So they're kind of close to the sutures. That's also the posterior palatine canal. So they go through and through. Now let's look at the four holes here at the side. The first hole is known as your optic foramen. The bone that, that holds this hole is the presphenoid. Always remember that. Optic foramen, orbital fissure, foramen rotundum, foramen ovale. Let's have a look at those tympanic bullae. You might notice a few holes, and that would be the canal for the auditory tube. You can also call that like the auditory canal or the canal for the eustachian tube. If we look at the tympanic bullae again, it has this kind of this this kind of thing that juts out to the basis sphenoid, and we call that the styliform or the styliform process. It just directs you towards that hole, which is the pterygoid canal styliform process points you towards the pterygoid canal. This very huge hole right here, that is the jugular foramen, but there is another hole behind that. That hole right there is the hypoglossal foramen. The bigger hole at the front, that's the jugular foramen. And then there's a smaller hole behind it, that is the hypoglossal foramen. Remember the mastoid process? There's a hole right there. That is the stylomastoid foramen. Again, if we cut this thing in half, which we're not gonna do, if this is the external auditory meatus, then there's a corresponding internal auditory meatus inside. 
and that's it oh my god that is the topography of your skull and all the fucking holes that we have seen i have to apologize did i mention the teeth let's mention the teeth no god please no the wonderful thing about mammals is that they exhibit what we call heterodonty which means that they have different kinds of teeth see different looking teeth the ones that sit on your premaxilla, these would be your incisors. The ones that sit on the maxilla, these ones would be the canines. These ones would be your premolars. Okay, these these three ones. And then the, the one at the back, that will be your molar. Just two teeny tiny molars. And then you got like these, these, these big ass, well, except for this one, but these big ass premolars. And then you've got these even bigger ass canines. And then you've got the teeny tiny incisor. So how do you know what kind of tooth you're looking at if it is sitting on the premaxilla then you know that it is an incisor the rest of the teeth canines premolars and molars all of them will sit on the maxilla and why am i saying this because there are certain organisms where their incisors actually look like canines their incisors are very long like tusks but if they sit on the premaxilla even if it looks like this it is not a canine it is actually an incisor but oh my god, please don't rip open just random animals just to check if their teeth are like sitting on the premaxilla. Let's not do that. <sighs> and that's it. That is the skull, finally. The next part of this will be the sagittal view of the skull. So we're gonna finally cut this thing in half. We're gonna look at that view of the skull, the interior of the skull, and we're just gonna discuss a few parts for that. Stick around in, for the next episodes, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much and peace out and the the tim put the, the blah, blah, blah. what do you call a sad cat eddie for sad